on the way that we live our lives. In other words, to put it simply and bluntly, what we believe controls how we behave. It determines who we are. And certainly, as we look down the road toward the coming election, certainly what we believe should determine which candidates we choose, which ones honor the oppressed, which ones seek justice, and so on and so forth. Isaiah's message is very simple and it's very clear. Don't you dare separate religion and politics. It just can't happen. So with that said, with that said, I've got to admit that sometimes I grow weary of the incessant, constant campaigning. And I have this temptation just to find some comfortable cocoon and pull the zipper up all the way around me for 16 or 18 months. Find that cocoon somewhere and hide. But the message that God has through Isaiah the prophet is that some issues, particularly justice issues, are clearly political issues also. And they must be discussed. And if we don't do it, if we fail to do it, how did God describe our worship? He said it was worthless. William Sloan Coffin is a preacher and an author, and he's wrote a very good book, and the title of that book is Credo. And it's a collection of some of the more remarkable writings that this passionate man, whose life was dedicated to issues of social justice and national morality, writes. Listen to the words that he has put down. The separation of church and state is a sound doctrine. But it points to an organizational separation. The church is one organization. The politics is another organization. It, though, is not designed to separate Christians from their politics. Our faith, what we believe, certainly should inform our common everyday life. How do we know how to live from what we've learned from Christ and the Bible? And not only does it, does it control our common life, it controls our private, more personal lives. Maybe what other people don't know. So religion and politics. Probably the relationship between the two in our country really ought not be surprising to any of us. I mean, after all, we came into being because religious people were seeking political freedom. That's all they were doing. They were tired of being persecuted. George Washington, and I didn't know this until I started studying for the message two weeks last week, had lived that line at the tail end of his swearing in where he said, so help me God. That was not on his manuscript. It was ad lib. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, who many people consider to be an atheist, but there is a group that says he was Anglican. There is a group that agrees, everybody, that he was a whale of a philosopher. Anyway, he lived his life two centuries before Mr. Bush, G.W. Bush, lived. And he knew that there was a portion of all of us back then, at the beginning of this country, that God was working in. John Bennett's going to know who G.K. Chesterton is in a heartbeat. He's an Englishman, a writer, a philosopher. And he had these words to say about our country. He said that America is a nation with the soul of a church. Now, if you chew on that, and if you think about that, I think it says something very, very good about who we are. So, I go back 
to the scripture that I've harped on now. I think this is the fourth time I've read it. Come. Now, let us reason together. And you know, here we are. I opened my prayer this morning and I called this and thank God for our sacred space. Because this space is sacred. This place is set, set apart. This is where we can come. And as the hymn said a moment ago, we can accept each other whether we agree or whether we disagree. But we can talk about anything in this space, even religion and politics. Why? Because you and I are brothers and we're sisters. And Jesus said we're his, what? Friend. He called us his friend. So regardless of what disagreements we might have, and folks, there are going to be a multitude of disagreements, we must remember through all of the shouting and screaming and hoopla and everything that goes on over the next 18 months, we've got to remember who is in charge. Who's the one who this is all about? Who is the one that we, that we are trying to please? It's God. It's God Almighty. And in His words today, He made it very, very clear to each one of us that He is in charge and what He expects. And for us who call ourselves Christians, that should make all the difference in the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.